So a few weeks ago, I was asked to submit an integral to the University of Hanover Integration B. And now that that contest has taken place, I'd like to show everyone what integral I submitted and we'll solve it as well. So it's the integral from zero to one half of the product from n equals one to infinity of one plus x to the two to the n. So I think maybe in the style of integration contest integrals, this one goes pretty fast if you know a trick, but seems totally impossible without a trick. And the first thing that we'll do is prove a claim which will help us use that trick. So let's do that now. And that claim is that the product from n equals zero to infinity of one plus x to the two to the n is in fact one over one minus x. And this is for values of x on the interval from minus one to one. And the idea behind this comes from the unique representation of any natural number in base two, which means every power of x in this expansion will be achieved exactly one time. It will be achieved at all because every natural number can be written in base two, and then it's achieved only once because that base two representation is unique. Okay, so that's the idea behind this equality, but how might this proof go? Well, I think there's probably a couple, but I've got this nice proof that uses tricks similar to tricks that you use when working with generating functions for integer partitions. So what we'll do is take this infinite product, so that product from zero to infinity of one plus x to the two to the n, and write it as the limit of a finite product. So, so like the limit of the partial product. But what I'll do is I'll write out a couple of terms from this partial product and then the last term. So what I really have is the product from zero to capital N in this case. So that'll give me one plus x, and then we'll have one plus x squared. Next will be one plus x to the fourth, and then we end down here with one plus x to the two to the capital N. So there's our partial product. And now the trick here is to carefully multiply this partial product by a version of one, and a version of one that will help us achieve this equality here. I guess like one thing I should add into this equality is this right hand side turns into this rational function because of convergence of geometric series. Okay, so let's get to it. So this is gonna be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of, well, we have one plus X, and then in between one plus X and one plus X squared, I'm gonna insert a version of one, and that will be one minus X over one minus X. And then I'll have my one plus X squared, and then in between one plus x squared and one plus x to the fourth, I'll insert another version of one. And in this case, it'll be one minus x squared over one minus x squared. And then I can just keep going. So I've got a one plus x to the fourth here. And then I would insert something in between that and the next term. And that would be something like one minus x to the fourth over one minus x to the fourth. And then that insertion would continue all the way up until my last term. And let's see, my last term is one plus x to the two to the n. And I will in fact insert something to the right of that. And that'll be one minus x to the two to the n over one minus x to the two to the n. Okay, nice. And now the trick is to carefully pair these numerators and then combine them. So I'd like to pair one plus x with one minus x. So that'll be my first pairing. My second pairing will be one plus x squared with one minus x squared. Next, I'll do one plus x to the fourth and one minus x to the fourth. And then all the way down here, it'll be one plus x to the two n and one minus x to the two n. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us with. Now I'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity. And then this one plus x and one minus x, well that clearly combines to one minus x squared. 
and then check it out. I've got this one minus X in the denominator. Okay, and then in fact, I'm gonna have a fairly large fraction here, so I'll just put it all like this. And then I'll keep my grouping, you know, like we've had it. And then I've got my one plus X squared and my one minus X squared. So those will combine to one minus X to the fourth. And let's see, my next term in the denominator is this one minus X squared. So let's write that down. And then next up, I have this one plus x to the fourth and one minus x to the fourth, well, that's pretty clearly going to combine to one minus x to the eighth. And then I have my one minus x to the fourth in the denominator, one minus x to the fourth like that. Okay, great. And then let's carry this up until we hit the last term and see what we have. So these two terms right here will multiply together to give us one minus x to the two to the n plus one. And then I have my denominator, which I can just bring along. So one minus x to the two to the n. And now we wanna take care of some obvious cancellations. So let's notice that this one minus x squared will cancel with this one minus x squared. So those are gone. And then after that, this one minus x to the fourth will cancel with this one minus x to the fourth, so those are gone. And then this one minus x to the eighth, well, that's gonna cancel with something that came right after it for sure. That'll cancel with something right here. And then this one minus x to the two to the n will cancel with something that came right before it. So let's see what we're left with. We have a one minus x in the denominator, and we have a one minus x to the two to the n plus one in the numerator. But now as n goes to infinity, because x is between negative one and one, we know that this x to the two to the n plus one will trend off towards zero, which means this term as a whole trends off towards one. And so that's in the limit, of course. So that leaves us with one over one minus x. So there we have it, we've proven this claim. But let's jump over here to our integral and notice in our integral we have a product starting at one. But we can take care of that pretty easily. So notice this product starting at one to infinity of one plus x to, to the two to the n. But now I can multiply this by a special version of one and that will be one plus x over one plus x. So I'll write it like that. And then I'll have my product as n goes from one to infinity of one plus x to the two to the n. Okay, good. But now what I'll do is I'll sneak this one plus x into the product by changing the starting term from one to zero. But now applying my claim, that'll give me a one minus x in the denominator. So I have the denominator is now one minus x times one plus x. And so that's in fact the function that we wish to integrate, which is very elementary. And now we'll finish that off. Okay, so far we've been able to change our integrand into the following nice rational function. And now let's integrate that. So we've got the integral from zero to half of one over one minus x times one plus x dx. So the standard strategy here is to use partial fraction decomposition. And I won't go through that because I think that's been on the channel before and you can find lots of videos doing these types of examples. I'll just jump to this being um, decomposed. So I've got one half, the integral from zero to one half of one over one plus x minus one over one minus x dx. Okay, but those are both like nice natural log integrals. So that's gonna give me the natural log of the absolute value of one plus x minus the natural log of the absolute value of one minus x. We need to evaluate that from zero to one half. But now I can smush those together using natural log rules. That'll give me the natural log of one plus x over one minus x evaluated from zero to half. I don't really need the absolute values anymore because my argument of the logs are both positive. So if I plug in zero, I get the natural log of one, which is zero. If I plug in one half, I'll get three halves in the numerator, one half in the denominator. That'll give me a three overall. 
So this gives me one half times the natural log of three. Or maybe you wanna write that as the natural log of the square root of three. Either one is good enough. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.